people will know that in the previous chapters we mentioned the same events that happened in Nagaipatanam, near Tanjore, on the same day when the tree fell behind the palanquin on which Mandakini was mounted, and on the same day that the boat on the shore of Viranarayana Lake was blown away by the wind. Nagaipatnam and its surroundings were in a state of chaos throughout that night. It was also impossible to help each other in a situation where it was enough for them to survive. However, the Buddhist monks wandered the streets of Nagaipatnam and helped the people as much as they could. On the same night, Acharya Bhikshu and Pani Selvam were staying awake and talking for a long time inside the Anamangalam Chola mansion. The people along the coast were talking and worried about how much trouble and losses they would suffer as the sea swelled due to this heavy storm. The prince called the palace bellman and inquired how much grain was in the palace granaries and how much money was in the treasury. It turned out that the granaries were full of grain. It was also found that there were twelve copper jugs of gold coins sent by Sembian Mathavi to renovate the temple of Nilayadashi Amon and Dukar Rungal Tirupani in Tirunagai Corona. O oh Guru! You have the means to do the deeds that are conducive to the Lord Buddha's will. Spend all the grain in the palace granaries in feeding the poor. Distribute the gold coins in the copper pots to the homeless. Said Prince Pani's Selvar. How is that fair? At least we can use the grain. Can we spend the money sent by their great-grandmother, Sembian Matthew Iyar, for the temple repair work on something else? Won't that old lady be upset? Said Acharya Bhikshu. Teacher. I will say peace to my great-grandmother. Now I will spend this money to wipe away the misery of the poor and needy. In the future, I will build hundreds of temples all over this Chola country so that my grandmother's heart will be happy and full of joy. I will build huge towers. I will erect stupas so high that even if the sea rages like this, I will not be able to hit them. I will build a big temple in Tanjavur with a tower as tall as the sky to be called Dax Hinameru. Sir! Don't worry even if the Sudamani Vihara, which is flooded today, turns to dust. Said Prince Awesome Tatumbak. Pani Selva. It makes me so happy that you talk so excitedly about the future. Said Pikshu. Yes, yes, it is God's will that I should live in this world and do some great things. It is because of him that he has saved me from so many dangers that befell my life. Look even today. This Murugayan somehow came at a good time. Otherwise, you and I would have been inside Sudamani Vihara. We never thought that the Viharam would be completely destroyed so soon. That is true, who could have expected that an event which had been going on for five hundred years would take place in a single moment this afternoon? Lord Buddha, the Sea of Compassion, saved them from the wrath of the raging sea. Through them they saved my meager life. I fully agree with what you intend to do. Take from the government treasury and spend. If they do, Thanatakari will be angry with the great philanthropist. Their lordship will not be angry with them for distributing to the temple. It is proper for them to do so. But is it not appropriate to lead this great pious work themselves? This poor ascetic cannot take on such a great responsibility. Gurudev. If I lead the way, I will have to reveal myself. What you said about the ignorance of the Pandavas is imprinted in my heart. I also remembered the words of the poet of our country, St. Hamel. Speaking is the saying of anything without malice. And always beneficial men and who has left the place of falsehood and foolishness. Isn't that what Tamil says? My best friend thinks that if I reveal myself to the people at this time, confusion and riot may result in the country. Because I am hidden there is no harm to anyone. Therefore, they should help the people who are suffering due to the cruelty of the storm with the material in the palace, said the prince. Boney's wealth. My mind has somehow changed. It has dawned on me that this is the right time to reveal myself and help people. I consider that to be the will of Lord Buddha, said the Bhikshu. At this moment, they heard a strange voice and both of them looked back in shock. Murugayan was sitting in a corner, covering his face with his hands and crying Vimi Vimi. The prince went to him and took him by the hand. Murugan! What is this? Why are you crying? He asked. My mother-in-law. 
my mother-in-law. Stuttered, and Muragayan whimpered further. Yes, yes. We have completely forgotten your wife. It is only natural that you should be worried about what has become of her in the storm and rain tonight. But there is nothing that can be done at this midnight hour. You can search for your wife when the day breaks, said the prince. I am not sorry for that, sir. Nothing has ever befallen her. She has weathered so many terrible storms and floods. Said Muragayan. Then why are you crying? Asked the prince. Padakati stuttered and gave the following details I am sorry that I suspected anything about her. She forced me to come here from Kadakare. She told me that they might be in Sudamani Viharam. I came because of her compulsion. I was even afraid that she was planning to do me some harm. It was now I know how evil you are. A little while ago you spoke highly of this poor boatman. You said that God saved their lives through me. But it was my wife who prompted me to do this thing. When I thought that we had doubted her, I was overcome with tears. Another doubt now arose in the heart of Prince Pawnee Selver, who was listening to all this. Father! Your wife is very good. You were wrong to suspect her. But how did she know I was here? He asked. My aunt and my younger sister Pungazali left for Nagaipadinam in a boat. From that my wife somehow guessed. Which aunt? Asked the prince excitedly. Sir, it is the mute aunt who has saved them from danger so many times in Ishad. Aha! Where are they now? What happened to your aunt and Pungajali? Did you say they came from here? Yes, they set out. But their journey has been hindered. After saying that, Muragayan started crying Vimi Vimi. Pawnee Selver got worried and pacified him by asking for details. The anger of the prince could not be measured when he learned that the Queen of Elam had been taken away by force. When she came to know that Rakamal tried to stop them, and for that they beat her and tied her to a tree and left her, the doubt that had arisen on Rakamal disappeared. The prince now grew to respect and admire her. It is up to you to help those affected by the storm. If you don't like to run it under their name, run it as Izatanaki Yara Rachala. Do they know that the Lady of Elam is a devotee of Buddhism? What? He usually resides in the monastery of the Buddhist Pikshas on the island of Bodhath, which the people call Buddha Tivyu, said the prince. The Buddha Bhikshu agreed without question. Said the prince. Buddha Bhikshu also agreed to this without saying anything. Said the prince. Buddha Bhikshu also agreed to this without saying anything. The next day the storm subsided. The raging sea also receded. But the devastation caused by them was beyond description. More than half of the houses in Nagaipatanam town have lost their roofs and stood as huts. In one of those streets Prince Aromas Hivarmar was walking in the guise of a merchant carrying a bundle on his shoulder. Behind him Muragayan was still carrying a huge bundle. They went looking at the chaos caused by the storm and flood. A woman was watching them come from behind the wall of a ruined house. She is no one else. Muragayan's wife is Rakamal. She waited patiently until Prince and Muragayan came near where she stood. Suddenly she ran outside and fell in front of the prince. Muragayan tried to get her attention. He signaled with a finger to his lips. Ush, ush, he warned. Nothing works. Son of Emperor Chakravarti. Hero of Virati. Wealth of Pawnee. Son of Penance of the Chola Nation. Did you survive without drowning in Sudamani Vihara? How blessed my eyes have been! She exclaimed. All the people who were passing by on the street at that time turned their attention to the prince. 